Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today's another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. And we're gonna be working on our Dodge Ram Cummins diesel truck today. So as you can see, all the black on the wheels right there, it's time for new brakes for this truck. I think I have metal on metal right here and I didn't expect that. I was coming down the mountain the other day and all of a sudden I heard this crunching noise and I knew it was time. So today we're going to put new brakes in the Dodge Ram pickup. We'll ride around, check on the cows and just have a little bit of fun here on the farm. All right? Woo! we got to get done here is we've got to back up load some junk out of the driveway I'm getting ready to do a full-on video about how to bring your driveway back to life and the proper way to use a box scrape but in order to do that I got to get all this stuff out of my driveway so hence the reason for the brake job and we're gonna try and get uh, Earl the tractor into the shop here we're gonna try and put the pallet forks on this tractor lift up the back end and drive it up into the shop where we can work on it in a flat dry place instead of a unsafe situation kind of got a little unsafe situation going on here I've got jack stands sitting up but on gravel and soft ground not a good thing so I've got a lot of cleanup work to do over the next few days and this is just part of it That's a big old piece of metal right there that was used in hauling the post driver all the way from Indiana. We had to slide that up underneath the post driver in order to pick it up and get it on the truck. So that belongs to Luke with Tornado Wire. off those two pieces actually I've already put the PVC pipe in the back of the truck we'll take that back to Lowe's drop off that metal piece and we'll call the cows up and get them fed beautiful day man it's supposed to be 66 degrees here tomorrow it's December nuts Sometimes you mess up and you put your feed barrel <laughs> in a place where you don't want to feed your cows. And that's what the situation is here. I can't pick this heavy thing up until it's empty. <laughs> I also just got a phone call. Uh, UPS Freight is bringing me a couple more farm implements. One of them is a grapple for the front of the tractor and another set of pallet forks. So, I can hear a tractor trailer pulling up down there. I gotta get moving, man. Somebody knows it's breakfast time. <laughs> Story of my life, dude. <laughs> Everything happens at once. Trying to feed the cows. Tractor trailer in the driveway. Got a phone call just now from Tartar Farm and Ranch. We're gonna try and start working with Tartar Farm and Ranch. I don't know, tell me what you guys think about that. Um, we need some hay bale feeders and stuff like that. I want to get a little bit of the science behind how that stuff is made and also why we're using the feeders that we're using. So we'll be able to compare some different stuff with you guys for raising your cattle.
big shout out to UPS Freight. If any of you guys work for UPS, big shout out to you guys. Very easy to deal with with freight. There are some that are not so easy to deal with. Just be respectful, be cool. That guy was cool, man. So this is a grapple and this is a set of pallet forks. There is a skid steer in the future for the farm and we need more critters to put on the skid loader. So that's what that is. We're gonna take it up to the barn and we'll go feed the cows. Guys, we had a visitor. This is Scott. Scott is Big Rock Farm, is that right? Yeah. And Scott raises German Shepherd and horses, right? Yes. He's, horses. A, he's where we got Buddy the dog. So if you need a nice, good bred German Shepherd, check out Big Rock Farm on Facebook, is that right? Yeah, or okay. Big Rock K9. Big, Big Rock K9, uh, is that a website? Your website? Facebook. Okay, Big Rock K9 on Facebook. Good Thank dogs. You. If you want puppies like, uh, like Buddy and Lexi, we know they're good dogs. Let's call them cows up. <laughs> woo! Ah, woo! <laughs> woo! All right, guys, we were talking about this the other day, and we're going to see if the Lion King call works to get the cows. By the way, Scott's right behind me laughing. Hello, cows! Woo! Woo! Who needs kids when we got cows? Right? <laughs> hey, mama. All right, this is number three. We haven't named number three yet. You guys are gonna have to help us. The boss cow's the one that's got the stickers on. That's number four. Oh. I always wanted a badonka donk donkey. <laughs> Let's get busy working on the truck, guys. So we got a problem down here. I have to replace the rotor. It's in pretty bad shape. I'll show you real quick. We're gonna have to make a parts run. So you can see the rotor right here is really scored, really, really bad. So I'm gonna have to make some phone calls and remove this and replace it with a new one. The good news is once I loosen the brake caliper, this should just slip right off, the, the rotor should. And I'm probably looking at my guess is about 80 bucks for the pair. That's my guess. Now we're into a job like this, so what do you do? Do you go ahead and get drilled and slotted rotors? Something a little bit better. We bought ceramic brakes so that we wouldn't have the brake dust issue. I had no idea this was gouging into that wheel that bad. Hmm, a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna pop the brakes out and see if that rotor will come loose and probably just replace both front rotors on this truck. Never quite works out like you want it to sometimes. <laughs> Not for bad luck, wouldn't have any luck at all. That's okay though, I want good brakes so I don't mind spending the money to make my brakes good. Pretty simple stuff here. We're gonna loosen two star bolts. I call them a star, what do you guys call this? Um, this pattern, I call it a star or Torx maybe. Torx bolts. I wanted to do this one side at a time. I didn't want to jack the whole truck up and do it all at once. Safety first. Always use jack stands when you're doing something like this. Out with bolt number one. And these bolts are designed to hold. There's a little groove right in here. You can see it now. A little groove right there. It's designed to hold a little rubber boot in place. Okay. We want something to support this brake caliper when we pull it off. And that's something that could be as simple as a jack stand. Raise it up. This guy should slide right out. Slide him out. And set him on the jack stand. Now we're ready to go. Here's our brake pads. I can't wait to see what these brake pads look like. Oh, this is 
gonna be bad. Whoa. There is no pad. That is my brake. And that is why this is destroyed on this side. Now I can see they're a little bit loose. The rotor is a little bit loose. Let's take the other pad out. Hopefully all four pads aren't that bad. No. So this one's still got a little meat left on the bones. But that one just totally trashed. Totally ate it up. We're going to have to remove the housing right here that holds the brake caliper in place. Ah, there it went. I almost broke my wrist. Whew. I'm actually going to take a zip tie and zip tie this guy up out of the way so I'm not bashing into anything that could get damaged. There we go. All right, got that out of the way. Looks like there was some Loctite on there. We'll probably put blue Loctite back in place right there. Blue Loctite will hold it steady, but it'll be able to be removed again. This is what holds the caliper in place. And off comes the rotor. Let's see if the other side looks as bad as this side. You can see how horrible that is. The other side, it looks pretty good, but it's, it's worn down too. It's the right thing to do. We'll go on and replace this. Story of my life, man. <laughs> it's never as easy as you think it's going to be. This job went from being a, like a simple one hour job to probably a three hour job with running around getting parts. Still no problem to replace that rotor and I thought it might be damaged. That's why I took that side off first. Let's go get a rotor. I'll be back in a minute. 87 bucks a pop. Whew. That's a little bit pricey. So we'll try our best to not contaminate the braking surface meaning we don't want to get oil or grease on that braking surface right there and we do have some brake cleaner that we'll spray this guy down with before we install our new ceramic brake pads now these had a warranty on them so that's good a two-year warranty but the only reason they'd go bad is if i did something bad right <laughs> like not change the brakes appropriately we're learning here. So I'm just gonna go reverse order, reinstall everything, and then hop on over to the other side. I'm gonna show you a cool camera trick. All the pros do this. Now you see it, and now it's done. <laughs> awesome. We'll put the wheel back on, we'll go get the other one, and we'll see you in just a minute. So what I'm doing now, I have a C-clamp and I have my caliper and I'm mashing back the plungers on the caliper. And uh, I did that last uh, last time. I, I, I think I'm going to do it first on this one so that I don't contaminate the brakes. In other words, I'm not handling a whole lot of stuff here after I put all new pads on and all new uh, rotor on there. So I'm doing this first right now. Basically, I'm just compressing. So brake caliper works like this. There's two, you see my glove. There are two plungers inside here and they push against the brake pads and that's what slows the car down as the brake pad squeezes onto this rotor right here. So that's what's up. Each one of these pistons, they're called pistons, in these calipers. These are two piston calipers and I had to bring each piston in all the way. And that's typical with any new brake job. So that's what I'm doing just mashing them in I'm gonna be slow and gentle and mash them in nice and easy and as you mash one in the other may pop out a little bit so it's kind of a tedious task back and forth to each one of these little rotors or <laughs> plungers excuse me in case you've never done a brake job uh, on your own vehicle it's not that complicated it's not that expensive to have somebody else do it either but you know I like to fit and finish when I get done with a project like this, so I like to know everything about it. And YouTube also provides me a nice record of when I did what. <laughs> so I'll know what day I did this because it'll be on YouTube. Now, so I zip tied my caliper up. And again, the caliper has one line going to it uh, that's a brake line that has brake fluid in it and you don't want to open that line and introduce air into the braking system. And there's also right beside it a speed sensor, wheel speed sensor that goes on here. Now we're gonna pull this piece off, show you what's going on. We're gonna pull this piece off and we're gonna replace the rotor here too. And this rotor, as you can see, is loose. It's not in very bad shape, but we are already doing one rotor. 
so we might as well do the other one. Ah, tore my glove. Ugh. Irritating. Ah, whew. That was a bear right there. Gonna have me a nice bruise right there. Awesome. I guess it's good so your brakes don't fall off your truck. But gonna be a nice bruise on that hand. There we go. And out with the old pads. Old rotor. Slips right off. We'll hang up the new rotor. Pretty simple. Slide it on there. We're actually gonna hit this with some brake parts cleaner too. Get all that factory oil off of it. Just as we did before, we're gonna take one lug nut and we're gonna put it on here, not real, real tight, but just so we can secure this caliper and keep it from, or this rotor and keep it from flopping around. There we go. A little dab of blue Loctite on here and we will reinstall this piece here. Pretty simple. Just reverse order of what we just did. I like this kind of stuff. I find it entertaining, fun, and educational for myself, and hopefully you guys do too. Stay tuned for the test drive. I'm just going to pop everything back in place, and we should be in good shape. Cool. Got the brakes on. Going to take her for a test drive here. I only am bleeding in two places. <laughs> that thing slipped, man, and gave way. Totally hurt. If you guys like stuff like this, please pound that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on here. We got to get old Earl the tractor in here tomorrow. That's going to be tomorrow's challenge. It's going to put the Jeep project, which is sitting right here, on hold while I get the tractor fixed so I can take the tractor up and park it in the tractor shed instead of in the yard or the lawn or the uh, front of the house where Mrs. Stony Ridge might get a little grumpy about it. <laughs> so let's hop in the truck, take her for a test drive, see how the brakes work. Whenever you change your brakes out, always expect them to be a little bit soft. Most likely, if you take them to a mechanic, they're going to take it around the block a couple times in order to make sure that the brakes are good on it. So always expect that if you're changing your own brakes, they might be a little bit soft at first. So pump them up good and uh, be careful. Go slow. That's what today's activities were. You see it's dark outside already. It's a full day's activities right there, man. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today, guys. Please, if you like this kind of content, pound that like button, jump in and subscribe to the channel. All kinds of fun stuff going on here on the farm. That's a 1952 Willis Jeep frame. The tub is over there. We're gonna start working on that soon. Got some old motorcycles back here. You probably saw those in the background. Just all kinds of fun stuff and we're starting a first generation farm. So we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge, guys. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.